Well, good morning, everybody. This is a long awaited summer intern presentations for Greentown for the year of 2021. And uh, it's been very inspiring. We always enjoy working with the summer interns, seriously. Uh, I hope we inspire you. I know you inspire us and you also motivate us. Speaking for myself, there is no way I would have been as far along getting the History Museum certified as a green business if it hadn't been for Kai and Kira. All together, the three of us have easily spent over 100 hours, and there's just no way I would have done that on my own. So thank you. We're going to, uh, today we're going to uh, have the interns, of course, give their presentations, and then uh, each of the team uh, mentors will uh, in introduce them. And I have an agenda, starting with uh, social media, then the green business certification, uh, the website, 500 Trees and Zero Waste. I think you saw that. I sent it out at any rate. We do have one guest, Nicole Nguyen, who is here from uh, the County Office of Sustainability. She was a big help with us in, in the green business certification process. Nicole, say hi. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Hi, Thank Nicole. you. Thank you again for all the help that you've done for us. Now, let's uh, start with Connie and Michelle. Michelle's not here, so Connie, in introduce your team, please. Great. So. Um, I just had an exchange with Michelle and she has a doctor's appointment and unfortunately won't be able to participate. So she sends her best wishes to everyone. Um, well, I worked exclusively with Taylor. Um, so I don't have a lot of information to share with the folks who mentored with Michelle, but I can tell you that I, I think the situation was I learned more from Taylor than Taylor learned from me. <laughs> um, I learned about how dependable and thoughtful and efficient beyond belief she was. You'd give her something and she'd come back and say, and you think in your head, okay, this is going to take 10 hours. And she'd come back in two hours and say, okay, I'm done. What's next? <laughs> so um, for me, it was a challenge to keep up with her, um, her, just her, resourcefulness and how smart she was. And so I really, really appreciated it and would love to um, be able to recommend you for anything, Taylor, that you want to do. So thank you so much for um, agreeing to be my teammate on this. I just really felt like we knocked off some very specific things that had been missing uh, for a while in our portfolio of uh, sort of marketing. So Take it away, Taylor. So Taylor, I made you a co-host, so you'll be able to share your slides. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Connie. It's been a great six weeks. It's been a pleasure working with you. She says uh, she learned a lot from me, but I learned a lot from her. She had a lot of information to share just about clean air specifically, but just she showcased her passion for the environment. But yeah, it was great working with you. So let me share my screen really quick. And I'll present this. So yeah, as we said before, I was part of the social media and marketing team. I was mentored by Connie. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a rising senior at Los Altos. I know a lot of the other interns here. And I was really attracted to Greentown because I've grown up in the Bay Area my whole life. And so I wanted to take a lot of what I've learned in my past like a few years and actually like create some change around here and see the impact I had. And so it was a short six weeks, but there were like three big things that our team accomplished. The first being headshots. A lot of y'all participated in this. We shot photos for all the board members, including the new board members and update all those bios and then relayed that over to um, Kaylee and Suresh so they could update the website. These were just a few once they load. A few of the headshots we convened at the Los Altos History Museum. Everyone was super efficient, super great on this. So we were able to get some headshots of everybody. We worked so that Kaylee could get these and then just update the um, like the team tab on the website just so that looks great. But yeah, 
And then next thing we did was we updated our kind of like informational presentation, which kind of gave an overview for other presentations, other um, events so that we could just give them an idea what Greentown was about. So I really like we kept in style. We got to showcase some of the pictures. Here we have some of our interns at the farmer's market and a creek cleanup. And so we got to talk about who we are. A new thing we added was these icons that were for each of the updated programs. We switched from word objectives to programs. And so each um, program has their own icon and we wanted to implement this across the website just for some uniformity to make it really clear and obvious where each one's going. And then just an example, these were some of the um, slides just really quickly going over each program. We were able to showcase some of what we've done in the past here with like creek cleanup and the tree planting for conservation, just giving people a quick overview of what we're about. And so I hope this will be used in the future and hopefully educate some more people in our area what Greentown's about and hopefully inspire them to get going and help out with us. And then the last thing was the heat pump video. So I got to come over to um, Connie's house. She was converting to a heat pump. And so I got to go over and document all of this. We ended up showing the conversion from her old furnace, which are the pictures in the upper left. It was like really um, not run down, but more traditional. And she wanted run to down. <laughs> run down. <laughs> but yeah, we converted to a really modern um, heat pump, which is showcased here. The pictures show the heat pump, the turbine, but also the compressor outside. And all of that went into if it shows the big video, <laughs> this was a quick little part of it showing her conversion, talking about the reasons why she converted to a heat pump and just educating people, hopefully getting them so that they could also move towards um, electric households. She talked about um, its effect on climate change and the greenhouse gases that often come from households. And so we condensed all of the information, all the photos into this three minute video that we're hopefully going to post on social media, hopefully on our blog and garner some attention from that. Yeah, that was pretty much our six weeks compacted into a few minutes. But yeah, I had a great time working with Connie, but also working with some other interns, meeting some new people and just being surrounded by people who are also like really passionate about the environment. So it was a great experience for me. And so thank you. Thank you, Taylor. That was great. So uh, we, have, we have time for one question after each presentation. How about that? I'm gonna be really tight with that just to keep us moving. But if somebody's got a really important question here for Taylor. Chris Jensen, our executive director, is here as well. So, where will we find this uh, heat pump video? Um, well, it is just like it just got completed last night, the final version. So, oh, okay. um, we'll we'll work to get it um, distributed both on the clean air portion of the website as well as um, we can put it out in Facebook posts, we can also put it in the, the um, newsletter as a link to the newsletter. So okay. How long hopefully is it? it's gonna be able to be repurposed in lots of places. I'm sure it will. Yeah. yeah. We'll get it to the Environmental Commission too. Maybe we'll get it to Nicole. <laughs> How long is the video? Three minutes. Oh, perfect. All right, super. Oh, Connie, go ahead and take us away on, uh, on, the, on the work that Michelle's interns are working on. Okay, so she worked with Annika and Annalise, is that right? Or just Annika? 
Anyways, Annika, I apologize. I don't have a better introduction for you because we haven't had the opportunity to work together, but I know that you're a seasoned veteran in the intern space. So I'm going to let you just take it away and um, tell us about your work with us. Thank you. Yes. So thank you. Um, I kind of go over what I did in my presentation, but basically I worked on marketing and um, developing effective tools and strategies for uh, the Greentown Instagram. And I learned a lot from both Margie and Michelle. I worked with both Margie and Michelle, and I'm excited to share uh, what I worked on. So let me share my screen. Oops, okay, one sec. <laughs> Okay, um, can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. You, yeah. Okay, cool. So hi everyone, my name is Annika Sika. I'm going to be a junior at Los Altos High School and this is my second year as a marketing intern at Greentown. Um, my interest in the environment developed um, around middle school when I joined my middle school's environmental club. And I just fell in love with um, making the environment a better place and doing whatever I can to promote sustainability in my community. Um, this summer, <clears throat> sorry, this summer, I primarily, I primarily focused on creating consistent Instagram content along with blog content. The goal was to increase our viewer engagement while also putting out or preparing educational content for our viewers to view and understand. As for the blogs, they had a similar purpose, just to educate the community and urge them to take that first step into sustainability. There were three main components and skills that I developed while trying to accomplish these objectives. The first, quite obviously, being Canva. Canva is an online design tool that allows people to easily design Instagram posts. During this internship, I got extremely comfortable with Canva and used it to design many of the Instagram posts that are scheduled and posted. The next tool that I utilized were meetings with Margie and Michelle, my advisors. We all sat on Zoom in our meetings and brainstormed marketing slogans or post ideas, and then I'd go and execute the ones that we deemed the most promising. These meetings were helpful in streamlining the process of ideating and designing posts. Another skill I used to accomplish this was my own research. I did a bit of research on my own regarding effective marketing and social media strategies and employed it to my work to Greentown. Over this internship, I had many successes and highlights. The first being a program I designed for Greentown with the help of Michelle and Margie titled Summer of Sustainability, in which Greentown is set to post challenges on Instagram, helping viewers kickstart their sustainable lifestyles. This is a great way to not only improve viewer engagement, but also increase the sustainability of our community. I also worked on designing many Instagram posts, as I mentioned before, as well as some templates for future Instagram posts of similar sorts. I worked on and started some blog posts as well. A highlight of the work I completed the summer was the software I set up for Greentown's LinkedIn bio Instagram setting. I set up a new system that streamlines the process in which followers can click on links in our profile, allowing, easier, allowing for easier accessibility. While there were many successes, I also faced some challenges during this internship, such as figuring out a color scheme and how to brand slogans to audiences. In the future, I will work on incorporating more color into my posts and devising more creative slogans and catchphrases to grab the viewer's attention. Interning with Greentown these past few years has been an absolute privilege and a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me and listening to me speak. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Annika. Any questions out there? Well, I'll allow one or two. So you mentioned effective strategies. What's can you tell me a couple of things that you're thinking about there? Yeah, so some strategies that we learned were that we can't just put, uh, our, our titles have to be a little more catchy and a little more in interesting on our, um, on our Instagram posts. For instance, we were designing a post for the uh, plant-based dairy alternatives event and, um, we realized that we couldn't just have the slogan on the title say plant-based 
uh, dairy alternative event. We had to make it more interesting and engaging so that it would catch people's eye. We also learned that uh, we had to use more. What would you come up with? Bold. It was like, I have to go pull up the post, but okay, it was something like, um, it was like something like dairy alternatives. And then in parentheses, we had like, Shh, don't tell it's <laughs> based or, so, you know, something like that, just to make people Good. Yeah, a little bit more like engaged in it. Um, and then we also realized that we had to use bolder colors. For instance, when I first started, I was using a lot of pastel colors to make the posts, but then we realized that having those bold colors in the posts are what really made them stand out in a viewer's feed. Okay. Some cool strategies that we learned. Nice, thank you. Any other questions out there? All right, let's move on. Oh, moving on, that's me. Um, I'm going to introduce the, the two um, interns who helped me with the getting the History Museum certified as the green business. And like I said earlier, it's a, it's a really quite a challenging, time-consuming uh, task. And I'm so happy that they helped me do that. So I believe, uh, so Kaya is uh, one of them. She's actually in Chicago on a family vacation. So thank you, Kaya, for taking a little time out from that to join us today. And then Kira is here. So I don't know who, who was going to go first in that or both of you at the same time taking turns, I believe. So go ahead and take it away. I, I think I uh, gave you co-host privileges. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen. But over the past six weeks, Kai and I have been working on the green certification of the Los Altos History Museum. The goal of the six week internship was to get the local Los Altos History Museum green business certified. The museum is located near downtown Los Altos and teaches all about our town's interesting and diverse history. Certification is given by the county and awarded for following sustainable and green practices. The objective for the certification was to increase business for the museum, increase overall sustainability, and decrease environmental damage. Out of a list of 67 measures, 52 were necessary to complete in order to get certified. 41 of the 52 are core measures, which means that they had to be completed. The other 11 that we needed to complete could be chosen um, out of any of the remaining measures. And we're sorry for the small font, that's just an image of the list of all the measures that were given on the certification website. We lost the screen share. Sorry, exited, just a second. <laughs> okay. Um. I'll go back to the slide, but this is just a picture of all the measures and our progress bar at the very beginning. Okay, so our process is pretty straightforward. We just started off by meeting with a couple people who were going to guide the direction of our project. And then afterwards, we met frequently in the museum to see what we could do to make progress on those measures. So to get started, we met with Nicole Nguyen, who's currently here. She was our contact at the County Office of Sustainability that manages the green certification for green businesses. And with her, we went over all of the measures that we'd have to complete, and asked her a lot of questions about what we'd have to do to get them done. And then afterwards, we created an action plan of all the things that we should start working on. And then a week or two into the internship, we met with Manny Hernandez, who is a Los Altos Maintenance Service Director. And because we realized that we didn't have access to a lot of the information we would need to fill out a lot of the measures, for example, like information on maintaining HVAC, like heating and air conditioning and pipe system. So we asked him and he said he could actually go through the records and find us a lot of this information. We're still waiting for that information back from him, but he said he'd get us get it to us very soon. And then we also met with Amiko and Cheta to go over our projects more and receive some more advice for how we can make upgrades or fulfill certain measures. And then we also went into the museum quite frequently to take note of all the stuff we could do. For example, we checked out the checked out all of the appliances, landscaping, and various other characteristics of the museum. 
after going through all of the measures, we were able to make progress on quite a few of them. Some of the main and most time consuming measures were the measures about cleaning supplies, landscaping, appliances, and lighting systems. The purpose of this measure is not only to protect the environment from harmful chemicals found in cleaning products, but also to protect the safety of staff and visitors to the museum. To complete this measure of, of using certified non-toxic cleaning products, we had to completely redo the History Museum's cleaning supply closet. Out of over 30 products, zero were certified by the necessary organizations. We categorized products, cut out all the unnecessary ones, and found sustainable alternatives. The final result was just three eco-friendly cleaning products. This measure states that 75% of the landscaping of the area of the landscaping has to be either drought tolerant or native in hopes of promoting a more sustainable and natural garden. In order to figure out what would qualify, we paced out and measured the entire landscaping in and outside of the courtyard around the Green Museum, which is this map over here of our rough estimate of the areas of all of the, the different spaces in the museum. And then afterwards, we made lists of what plants were native and drought tolerant and found that most of the area outside of the courtyard was drought tolerant and native, while the area inside had more plants that required more water. Then by looking at the respective areas of the outside and the inside, we found that we just squeaked by with around like 75 to 76% of the plants in the yard being drought tolerant or native plants. Uh, we also looked at the appliances to see whether they were Energy Star qualified as efficient because it would be a lot better to have efficient appliances for the purpose of sustainability. We found that there was actually a scanner, refrigerator, and this water machine that were all Energy Star uh, qualified, but the rest of the appliances were not. And although that may seem like a problem for the purposes of this measure, we just had to ensure that the museum buys Energy Star appliances whenever it replaces a new one old ones. The purpose of this measure about replacing lights with LED bulbs was because LED bulbs are energy efficient, meaning less greenhouse gas emissions are released from power plants than if you used halogen or incandescent light bulbs. Although the majority of the lights were already LED, this measure was a difficult one to complete as it took mapping out the lighting systems, identifying each bulb's model, and finding alternatives to the halogen and other non-LED lights. We were able to find sustainable alternatives and made a message to the History Museum staff, letting them know which LED bulbs and models to buy when the current bulbs would burn out. However, there were still a lot of things that we weren't able to finish completely for various reasons. As I mentioned earlier, we're still waiting for information about maintenance and waste from Manny Hernandez. There are also just some measures that were very difficult for us to complete. The first of which was a carbon footprint measure, because even though a carbon footprint may seem pretty straightforward, the one that is required by the system needs us to map out all the miles taken by all of the employees in order to get to and from the business, which was just a lot, we couldn't figure out how we were going to coordinate that. And then another measure that was really difficult to complete was one about the energy source. I think this might've actually been an elective measure, but it asked us to find like a renewable energy source that the museum could implement itself. And although we, we were thinking about solar panels for a little bit, but it wouldn't really make sense at the current time it, I think we might just have to fulfill this measure by implementing an action plan for solar panels in two years or whenever the roof gets replaced and maybe thinking about implementing it then, but even then we aren't necessarily really sure about whether that would be very useful. And then a third really difficult measure was the ones about green businesses because there were two parts to this measure. The first part stated that we had to encourage another business to become a green business. That was actually pretty difficult because there are 52 measures that take a long time to complete as we realized. And it's kind of hard to convince other businesses to take on that process. And the second part of this is that we had to do business with another green business. And there aren't very many green businesses in our area, like anywhere near us. So we weren't exactly sure who we were going to do business with. So that was another really difficult one for us to figure out where we're going to go with. 
Although we didn't quite reach our goal of getting certified, we were very close, so we made a few suggestions for the museum to complete or work on after the internship had ended to help reach more of the requirements for the green business certification. Throughout the internship, we suggested to implement these programs or ideas in the museum. The first was a training program for the cleaning staff that would educate them about the necessary eco-friendly cleaning products, as well as proper waste management, um, according to the green business certification guidelines. More suggestions were certain new appliances to install when the current ones broke down, such as the oven and fridge in the kitchen that were energy, that were energy star approved, because that was one of the core measures that was necessary to complete. In addition, general new materials like unbleached paper, the correct brand of ink, or print, ink cartridges, and LED lights were suggested to be used. This ties into the last program or idea that we suggested to put in place, which are general sustainability notes that help to fulfill some of the core measures. These were messages all around the museum that highlighted which products to buy, like cleaning supplies or light bulbs, as well as little notes saying things like print double-sided on paper or compost food instead of throwing it away. All of these programs would fulfill certain necessary measures. Finally, we also compiled a list of sustainable alternatives to things such as paper products and the current coffee pods to hopefully make the products that the museum uses much more sustainable. This list also included other things such as water aerators, but the county actually said it would provide us water aerators for free to complete that measure. So by switching to these self-sustainable alternatives, we would be able to address four more core measures, and these will be sent on to the museum to be kept on file for whoever purchases the paper goods as well as the coffee in the future so that we can hopefully complete these measures and be more sustainable. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and listening to our presentation. Thank you, Kaya and Kira. Uh, so you see there is a lot going on here. Um, I, I, I know Manny and, and uh, see him uh, quite often and he, he said he would get the information that we need this week. Well, <laughs> we'll see. I'll keep nagging him until he finally does provide it. So we will make progress on that. Uh, just to draw your attention, I thought it was pretty interesting to learn that of the cleaning products we had, of approximately 30 of them, zero were <laughs> certified as green products. So we're gonna make good progress there. Let me just tell you one more thing. Uh, the two interns presented this to the board, uh, History Museum board uh, yesterday at our monthly board meeting, and it, we have full support from the board. They love what we're doing here. Uh, the executive director uh, is fully supportive. She thinks it's the right thing to be doing. So we will get this done. <laughs> Nicole, do you have any uh, thoughts or comments? No, I'm so impressed with this uh, presentation. You know, not only is it difficult to do the entire certification, but to also analyze and understand the reasoning behind each of the measures is uh, something we try to, um, uh, I guess, educate business about. And so the interns really grasp that. And you know, it is it is a lot of work, but we're hoping, you know, the program itself is, um, it's to help businesses understand the entire process. Every single aspect, every decision they make makes a big impact and we're really trying to prove that. And the interns did a great job um, on the progress in just six weeks. That's that's a lot to cover in six weeks. So congratulations on that, very great. Yes, I think so. And Nicole told me that they uh, are getting some funding from the state, I believe, uh, so we can get a, a rebates for up to $500 at the yeah. museum for making whatever we have to purchase to, to uh, make some of these measures happen. So thank you for that. All right, beautiful. Well done. Thank you, Kaya and Kira. Uh, next up, it's Suresh and uh, introduce your program and your intern, please. Thank, uh, thank you, Gary. Um, yeah, great. Um, Kaylee worked on, on a website primarily and I think there were a bunch of uh, objectives for, uh, for her for her to work on. Uh, primarily to look at, look at our um, you know, website to see how we can make it more engaging, um, to have content that's more relevant when people um, get to our website, especially on our front page, um, not just make it static and see how we can incorporate what we do from our social media, our blogs and so on in a more interactive way or at least more fresh way on our website. Um, another goal for her was uh, to um, look at our blogs and see how we might want to better organize them. 
And I think as a process, and she'll talk about a little bit, we learned a lot. And I think that's a, that's a great, um, um, that's a great outcome for the process. It's a process. It's, it's going to take some more time to implement some of the ideas she's come up with, but I think we have a good framework. Um, and uh, finally, I think she um, uh, was working on how we can make our project pages capture all the information we on, we, you know, we want to put in there. And, um, and fortunately, the, uh, the Plastic Free July project was a fantastic source for this. And as she was working on a template, I think it just took on an entirely new, um, sort of became a big uh, animal by itself. Uh, there's quite a bit of work that came that way, but it was great because I think it fed directly into how we may want to capture some of the information and how to organize that. It's been an absolute pleasure working with Kaylee. She's super diligent. She's made, made sure that I make all our meetings, check off all the boxes. So it has been an absolute uh, pleasure. So it's great being working with her. And I hope she, you know, she continues to help us with, uh, with this going forward. Uh, Kaylee, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Um, okay. So as Suresh said, I'm the website intern and I've been working with him for the past six weeks. Um, I've learned a lot about website design and um, kind of thinking from a user perspective and a lot about how to use Wix. So our objectives were to update- Katie, if you go up and, pre and press the present button, it'll go to the slideshow. Yeah, I was just thinking of staying here since I'm gonna be switching to other slide uh, tabs slide frequently. Thing. Yeah, so our objectives were to, again, update the website, the homepage, the project page, and then to clean up the blog. And how I did this was doing research on color theory and website design, um, having meetings with board members to collect feedback and doing multiple iterations of the homepage and project page template based on that feedback. And overall, I would say it was a success. So I'll be going over three main things, the updated homepage, the updated um, style of the website, and then the project page template. So as you can see here, this is a cloned version of the website. Um, so as you can see, here's the updated homepage. We have now a white header and this new slide, um, that's a new permanent slide, which showcases some of Greentown's achievements. We updated the format of latest news and articles to display more blog posts. Um, and we added this new strip called blog highlights, which will allow Greentown to highlight important blog posts and keep them on the homepage for longer amounts of time. And we added an Instagram feed so that um, people can quickly and easily access our Instagram from our website. And so that's kind of how the um, new homepage looks like. And we also made the banner a little bit narrower or thinner. Um, okay, and then the next thing we did was kind of revamped like the style of the website and the look of it. And so I'll just go over some pages that have implemented that new style. So it started with clean air. This is what um, the objective pages will be looking like. We wanted to make it a little bit more modern, a little bit cleaner. And so I decided to differentiate sections of um, web pages with color. And so this is kind of what it looks like. Um, we have the header, why we need your help, and how you can get involved. And these are all of the projects and resources. Um, we also implemented this style on the About Us page. And you can see it's pretty similar. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. And then also with the Get Involved. And so this was just a chance for us to really update the um, look and feel of the website. And then the third main thing was um, the project template, project page template, which we created so that all of the project pages in the future would look um, similar and there would be a little bit more cohesion with the website, but it's very customizable. And you'll see that with, with the Plastic Free July page. So we have these sections to display different information in different ways, um, a section for resources, and this can be links to other websites, PDFs, or videos. 
um, and we have a contact form and then a blog strip and an Instagram feed if people would like. And um, an example of the project page template implemented is the Plastic Free July page. As you can see, there's kind of the skeleton of the um, of the template, but it's been very, it's been customized a lot. So you have all the information here, the contact form, but now it's take our pledge. Um, resources, more resources and links. Um, and then an Instagram feed so that people can see all the Plastic Free July posts on the web page. And so that's kind of what it'll look like when it's been implemented and customized. And then the last thing was the blog. Um, I didn't get very far with regards to like actually updating the um, blog posts themselves, but we did make a bit of progress with regards to how we're organizing it um, with tags. We're not going to have these many tags. We're still working on cutting it down um, with categories and kind of the format. So as you can see, blog posts are smaller now, so we can display more. So there's still uh, quite a bit of work to be done with the blog, um, but overall we made a lot of progress. So I would say the biggest highlight was getting to revamp the overall style of the web page or of the, of the website, which did involve going down some website design wormholes. Um, I'm really proud of the product that we ended up with. I think it's, it's really clean and modern um, and it's like a, definitely a new look. It was a really fun process, not just going down like rabbit holes on the internet, but actually getting to think about the layout of the web page and color schemes and like accent colors and all of that. And I just think it looks really cool and new. Um, I don't think this was one of our like original objectives to completely revamp the style like this, but I'm really um, pleased that I got the opportunity to do it. And I'm really excited to implement this throughout the rest of the website. Um, the biggest challenge was probably communicating with everyone. There were a lot of emails to be sent and um, there was a lot of confusion to be cleared up, but I think it was, um, I'm really thankful that I got the experience and in the future, I can hopefully better navigate communicating with a bunch of different people. Um, and so overall, this was a really wonderful experience and a great opportunity for me to intersect environmentalism and technology um, and just get more involved with my community. Um, any questions or feedback? Amy, that was wonderful. I, I really like the new look of the website that you created here. I'm mm -hmm. sure it was with other people's help too, but uh, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have done it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know if, if anybody else has any questions. I mean, I'm tempted to ask, what were these rabbit wormholes that you were dealing with? But that's probably too complicated. So let's just, I, <laughs> I, I imagine you learned a few things along the way as well as, as we did. Yeah. I would just like to say thank you from the uh, Plastic Free July um, Zero Waste team <laughs> to Kaylee and Suresh for for really tag teaming with us in this learning experience of, of uh, the sort of a production line. Uh, and I know that Annalie and Michael will talk a little bit more about that. And Annika too, for help with the blog posting and stuff. So thanks from our team to your teams. Yeah, Thank I, you, Donna. I, I, you know, I have to give all the credit to uh, Kaylee. She was, she, uh, she was instrumental <laughs> in getting, uh, getting this going. Um, she didn't mention this, but I, there's a couple of things that she's also researched um, and recommended is essentially a tools to add on to our Wix uh, page to help track people's um, um, people's sort of behavior on when they visit our website, where they're going uh, to get us a better map. And um, it's something that I'm, you know, we're looking to and to add on to the website. Um, it's an additional cost, but I think it's a great tool for us to help um, figure out how people are using our website so we can make it easier to get to places where people are going to or want to go to and so on. So that's, uh, that's something that's probably coming as well. Um, Kaylee, I just wanted to chime in. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Um, as part of the marketing team and sort of resident um, look and feel police, I thought you did a great job of keeping true to our uh, green town colors and look and feel. But I also felt through your presentation, I said, wow, this is really a more fun, approachable uh, design and also one that feels a little more youthful. So I, I just spot on, did a great job and um, gave us a foundation that we can use. We want to be a very approachable organization. And I think you really captured that in the design. So thank you so much for your thoughtfulness in that. Thank you. Yeah, I agree, Connie. And yeah, what we need is another summer vacation so we can do six more weeks. Anyway, that's not going to happen, but thank you, thank you. Um, I guess the next one's me. Uh, this is the 500 trees, and Nicole has uh, uh, helped me and uh, in a couple of different ways, and she's going to uh, talk, talk about that in her presentation right now. Nicole? I mean, <laughs> Nicole. Naomi? Sorry. Hi, um, I'm Naomi. Uh, let me screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so hi, I'm Naomi. I'm a rising junior at Los Altos High School, and I worked with Gary on the 500 Trees program. Um, yeah. So going into the program, our objectives were to update the tree list, which we give to homeowners when we're planting trees. Um, to contact previous volunteers and homeowners from the last tree planting season and get their sort of feedback on the program and to possibly map um, tree coverage of trees that Greentown has already planted. So in the bottom right hand corner, you can see um, an image of a map, um, kind of the map we were going for um, that was made by Canopy, another tree planting nonprofit. Um, and our last goal was to possibly develop a tree planting program with the city. Um, so what we did, uh, we I did outline some questions for the homeowners and volunteers, um, and we updated the tree list with a couple more drought tolerant and native trees. Um, but probably the biggest thing um, we accomplished was we presented to the Los Altos Environmental Commission um, asking them to establish an urban forestry program. Um, and, you know, trees have a lot of economic, environmental, and public health benefits. Um, and although Los Altos does have a pretty good tree cover already, we really just wanted uh, to maybe bring this sort of program to the city because it makes it a lot easier to do routine, routine maintenance evaluation and possibly even implement education programs. Um, and outreach programs. I mean, I think the biggest point we made sure to make um, in this presentation was um, it would really showcase Los Altos's environmental priorities. Um, and we did use a program called Tree City, which is a part of the Arbor Day Foundation, um, which basically outlines steps that a city can follow to become a tree city um, and to establish an urban forestry program. Um, and in the case of Los Altos, we did think it would be helpful to make this sort of program part of the developing climate action and adaptation plan. Um, and going out of the presentation, our big like ask of them was to hopefully establish a subcommittee that will work on developing this kind of program. Um, we did have some successes, but I also faced some challenges. Um, our big success was that the Environmental Commission was pretty receptive um, and we got a good response from them. So hopefully sometime in the future, um, our idea of a urban forestry program will become reality. Um, but I didn't meet all of our goals we set. Um, you know, we didn't uh, create that map that we wanted to. And I think it came down to time management um, on my part. Um, I know Gary, like, said at the beginning of the program, you know, six weeks seems like a long time, but it's actually not. And I think it flew by for me. Um, but, you know, that map can be a goal for future interns. Yeah, overall, I'm so grateful to 
have been a part of this program. Um, I think the biggest highlight was just how much I learned. I learned a lot about the benefits of trees and different types of trees. I also learned more about environmental racism and tree equity. So I was aware of the concept of environmental racism, which is when poorer communities bear the brunt of poorer communities and communities of color bear the brunt of climate change. Um, but there's sort of like a subset of environmental racism um, called tree equity. And it's basically, um, you know, poorer communities and communities of color have less tree coverage, which, you know, in a warming climate, that means that they, they bear the brunt of, of, of heat. Um, so in the bottom right hand corner, you can see there's a map of Los Angeles, which shows areas that were redlined. And if you look at current maps of the tree coverage in Los Angeles, you can see that those areas that were redlined um, directly have less tree coverage than areas that were in green and were, you know, um, marked as good on these maps. And above that image of Los Angeles, the redlining map, um, you can see a series of images. And I think this series of images really illustrates the problem of tree equity very clearly. So it's of this one street in Los Angeles called Vermont Avenue. And in the north, the street starts out um, in areas marked green. So they're wealthier, they're wider communities. And as you can see, they're, they have very good tree coverage. And as you move down the street, you get to poorer communities, communities that were redlined. And in the last series of images, um, there's virtually no trees. And I just was blown away when I saw this image um, because it was so clear. Um, and, but that problem just isn't in cities like Los Angeles. Obviously, uh, Los Altos and the areas around Los Altos um, were redlined. And so if you go to, um, if you go to this website um, called Tree Equity Score, um, and I'll make sure to paste the link in the chat. It shows you um, tree equity in Los Altos. And so this organization um, analyzed tree equity in a bunch of cities across the US based on population density, income, employment, health, age, race, and surf surface temperature and the existing tree canopy. And you can see in some areas of Los Altos, they have a pretty good tree equity score and almost no people in poverty. Whereas if you go to some areas of Los Altos, they have a much lower tree equity score and they also have um, more people of color and more people in poverty. And so that's just something um, that we can be aware of um, we're moving forward with our tree program and possibly with the city's tree planting program. Lastly, um, I'm super grateful for the experience, however small, that I got with city government and talking to experts. Um, so I did meet with Amiko Anchetta, who is the sustainability coordinator for Los Altos and Maya Briones, who works with Canopy, um, another tree planting nonprofit. And it was just really interesting to see people who had made their careers and dedicated their whole lives to you know, this issue that I was really passionate about. Yeah. Um, so overall, I'm super grateful that I got this experience um, and thank you for listening to my presentation. Any questions? Thanks, Naomi. I really enjoyed working with you as well. Uh, and and yeah, we learn we learned things too. Uh, I think the uh, the presentation of the Environmental Commission went quite well. Thank you for that. And and then they were, uh, you know, it was a public comment set, so they couldn't really uh, respond to it. But uh, in talking to uh, Amico the next uh, week or two uh, at the farmers market, I bumped into her. And she's and she thought it was uh, very possible that it could end up in the in the climate action and adaptation plan in some form or other. So we'll just keep after them and try to make sure that happens if at all possible. Um, let's see. Any other questions from somebody? You know, the tree tree equity thing I I think is is an interesting uh, issue for us as we go forward. I know that Canopy has programs to get trees planted in 
East Palo Alto and, and certain parts of Menlo Park. So maybe uh, some component of our 500 trees program could uh, go in that direction as well. I think that's uh, be uh, helpful. Good justification for the program. There are the, the tree map idea of getting, looking at say even just the city of Los Altos, we have a lot of trees, but there probably are uh, areas that could use more. And so that'd be a, a, something of keen local interest, I think. Anyway, thank you once again, much appreciated. Naomi's gonna be uh, uh, at the high school next year, a junior, I believe, yes, um, taking biology. And so I think she's gonna uh, be particularly interested in the trees. <laughs> Thanks, Naomi. Okay, next and last zero waste team, uh, Donna, Margie, and, and your interns, please. Um, I'll, I, I can go first. <laughs> we were a team of four. Um, and so Margie and I had the pleasure of working with two rising seniors, Michael Luke uh, and Annalie Chow, um, who each brought um, different and valuable tools to this uh, project for this summer. Um, I think that uh, we started off with a broad list of um, things we thought we would delve into and uh, realized it was going to be important to focus on, on um, one in particular, which was the Plastic Free July campaign. And I'll just say at the outset, they're going to talk obviously about the details, but um, the um, the energy and creativity that it takes to design a month long campaign from scratch is enormous. And I think that Annalie and Michael both did a terrific job on this. And I will turn it over to Margie and then uh, she can take it from there. Well, I'll yield my time to the interns who have the most to say about it. Um, I, I really appreciated the opportunity to work with them. I had very little internet at, at when I was up uh, at the lake in upstate New York. So I, kudos goes to Donna for the, the greatest uh, management. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take it away, guys. Um, all right, uh, I guess I'll present it. Can get sharing uh, privileges. Okay, that's me. Sorry. Uh, let's see. There you go. All right. All right. So here's a presentation on Michael, a rising senior. And I'm Annalie, I'm also a rising senior. Let me present this. Okay, so we had this list of objectives at the start of our internship, um, but our overarching kind of main objective was to really just inspire the community to learn about the plastic pollution crisis. So like the causes and effects and suggestions on what they can do to positively impact it. Um, and this objective kind of includes all of the other bullets as like subsets. Um, and we did this by first educating ourselves. So by documentaries, articles, and videos. And then we pushed out a lot of resources to um, people via Instagram, email, and our website, which we got a lot of help from um, Kaylee and Suresh with. One of the objectives we didn't get to was facilitating proper recycling for non-reusable items. Um, because we really wanted to focus on reducing waste at the source uh, rather than kind of um, uh, trying to sustainably dispose of it after it was used. Um, so there was one main way that we went about accomplishing our, our objectives, but we started out by looking at the um, climate action plans of other cities, so like Menlo Park and Cupertino, because we knew that Los Altos was developing our own climate action plan, and we wanted to kind of get some ideas for that. 
Um, but we didn't end up spending that much time on this because the climate action plans aren't big on waste reduction. It's more um, clean energy and transportation and reduction of greenhouse gases admitted through energy use. Um, but we did get to learn what other cities are doing to kind of reduce their waste um, and just start thinking about waste reduction generally. Um, but our main strategy, I guess you could say, was designing our Plastic Free July campaign. And Plastic Free July is a global movement that provides plastic alternative suggestions to people who want to reduce their plastic waste. And we thought this would be a great idea to kind of allow our community members to get more, invo more involved. So um, yeah, they were able to send their pictures to us and we asked them to support local bills. Um, and so they could have kind of a more tangible impact in their community and a more tailored experience. Um, so yeah, as Donna kind of already touched on, our campaign was four weeks, we're still working on it, but um, the first week was pushing out plastic crisis educational resources that people can get some background on that. And then um, plastic free swaps was our second week. Right now we're working on legislation and advocacy and then um, we're gonna close off with a campaign summary so that people can have the key takeaways. And then each week we sent out one email and published one blog post and three Instagram posts, which were learn, act, share. So that's kind of what it sounds like, just resources, action items, and ways people could bring others into the loop and into the movement. These are two examples of Instagram posts that I designed. So um, the one on the left is just the introduction post. And the one on the right was kind of the standard weekly post that people would see um, on Instagram. And okay, so the farmer's market was one of the first um, things we participated in for this internship. And we thought it would be a great idea to launch our campaign at the farmer's market. So as you can see, we had our booth set up and we had a gift basket to kind of attract people to our booth and um, get them to stay longer so that we could get the information out that we needed. Um, and yeah, so the gift basket was part of our prize drawing. So basically if people signed the Plastic Free July pledge, they would be entered to win this gift basket at the end of July. And then the flyer on the right is something I designed on Canva, which was something people at the farmer's market could take home, just so that they had the necessary information and could follow up and remember to take part in our Plastic Free July campaign. All right, successes. So we had a very successful mar uh, farmer's market launch where the visitors at our booth were very engaged. We had an interactive booth with visual examples teaching how to become more responsible with plastics. And being at the farmer's market and talking about Plastic Free July helped me learn a lot about ways to reduce plastic waste. You know, there's a saying that the best way to learn is to teach others. And I felt like I learned a lot being at the farmer's market. And so with the help of Kaylee and Suresh, we put together a beautiful Plastic Free July webpage, which is full of interactive info. Um, the website has blogs, books, articles, videos, podcasts, and a sustainable shopping list. All of these resources are not only useful during this Plastic Free July, but can also be saved and used in the future as well. So we think uh, that our website did great. There was 24 people who signed up for the pledge. And during the July newsletter, the Plastic Free July webpage was the top clicked item. We also reached out to, uh, to neighbors and other people and green, uh, other Greentown Los Altos members to get plastic swap uh, videos. We got these videos to create a blog about ways to swap out um, everyday items for plastic free alternatives. And we also contacted the Los Altos Green Team and they helped promote Plastic Free July through their Instagram and tagging us along it. All right, so here are some people who visited the farmer's market and took the pledge there. And uh, on the top right, we have the pledge on, uh, the, on our website that um, some people took. So this is our plastic, this is just a screenshot from um, our website. You see we have our resources and we have our blogs 
and the pledge. And here is a um, one of the videos that we collected. Um, this here's Kim Jones talking about bulk shopping. Staff of Life in Santa Cruz has reopened its bulk department. They have a huge assortment of food items, oils, coffee, and also household goods. I took in my own containers. You get them weighed first and get a tear on them, and then you refill them. So I got dish soap, laundry soaps, laundry powder. Also decided to get some hair conditioner in my own bottle and in the dried fruit section got some raisins. This is um, an insert from a cereal box. Next time I need to take some more containers and stock up. So happy bulk shopping. Percent <laughs> again. Okay. Um... Hi, I'm Kim from Green Town. All right, and here's a, uh, snap sh a screenshot from our sustainable shopping list. We have uh, local shopping and online shopping with uh, links to their websites or um, stores. And some challenges that we had. So one personal challenge that I had was learning how to use Canva and the other content creation software um, for communication and editing. Uh, so as with any project, there are many people and moving parts involved. and there was some difficulty aligning content. Um, one example of this is I made a newsletter on Canva, which wasn't easily translated onto MailChimp. And so I made things a bit more difficult than it should have been. And that was definitely a learning moment for me. Um, for posting content and timing, we had a lot, we had uh, so much stuff to, uh, to talk about and to teach that we often had to redirect viewers to our blog. And this made some of our content dependent on our blog um, because it was linked to it which slightly slowed down some, uh, some things in some places. So one example of this was um, our original plan for Instagram posts was to post them on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but um, we had to just slightly shift our schedule to Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, getting promotion and engagement. So promoting Instagram posts and getting interaction was slightly difficult. Um, it was slightly difficult to manage creating content, posting, and uh, trying to get promotion and interaction in a timely manner. And one of the main things that we uh, were that we worried about was to not overwhelm our audience with too many posts. Okay, the highlights and takeaways. So my highlights and takeaways. So one of my biggest takeaways is that um, I need to take more responsibility for my plastic usage. Uh, plastic Free July showed me how common and normalized plastic is in everything. In, in everyday life, which made me realize how much plastic plays a role in my life. Another takeaway that I had was um, just learning about our plastic situation as a whole. I remember one of our first tasks was to watch a documentary about the story of plastic, which, which really opened my eye to the crisis that we have dug ourselves into. And so I mentioned this before, but at least for me, um, just the all the moving par parts of a project was, um, it's created a new environment for me and it, like helped me learn a lot about just communication and just working as a team. And another, another thing I learned was all the legislative action that is currently being taken place and that is going to take place. Um, especially for week three of Plastic Three uh, Free July, there was a lot of legislative action that I had no idea about that really opened my eye and makes me think of all the other things that um, I, I can do that can change um, our plastic situation. And so my highlights were um, are the farmer's market and working with um, and working with uh, my team. Um, I had a lot of fun at the farmer's market just talking with people and um, learning more about plastic alternatives. It was a lot of fun just uh, seeing all these people and just talking about uh, ways to improve uh, plastic usage. I had a lot of fun creating content with my team. I learned a lot from working with them and also with uh, Kaylee and Suresh and the other interns, um, just building a web page. And um, I guess my main takeaway of all this is that I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just have my takeaways here quickly. Um, one of the biggest things I think I learned is that individual action is definitely necessary and beneficial, but what we really need is legislation that addresses the sources of plastic 
population because if it keeps being provided to us, then we're never going to change our um, style of life that's so dependent on plastic. Um, I also learned that recycling plastic is not the solution to plastic waste because um, a lot of the time, you know, recycling contamination can occur or there's different types of plastics that are mixed together um, or people just don't know what can or can't be recycled. And so that has kind of broken down the recycling system and it makes it hard for plastic to actually be effectively recycled. And a lot of times it can just end up in a landfill or an incinerator. Um, I also learned that single-use plastics don't just contribute to waste and litter, um, but they fuel the, the fossil fuel industry and they kind of cause incineration and um, microplastics harm wildlife and ecosystems. So it's kind of a multifaceted problem that isn't just litter, but it's really intertwined with the rest of climate change. Um, and then for my highlights, I really enjoyed the farmer's market because it was a very hands-on experience um, and a great way to start off the internship. Um, and then I had used Canva before, but I was able to learn how to use it better. And then educating myself on the plastic crisis and actually having something to tell others who were interested and feel like I was a little bit more knowledgeable on the topic was really great. And of course, working with Margie and Donna and Michael because they were a great team and they were very enthusiastic um, and accommodating. So yeah. Great job, guys. Yeah, thank you, Annalie and, and uh, Michael. Uh, yeah, the, the, the whole issue of plastic is a huge challenge, but there are things that are being done. It, it's, there, are, there is some hope for sure. And, I'm, and I know that it, you watch the story of plastic and it kind of overwhelmed you a little bit, but, <laughs> but think we are making progress and th there is a reason to be hopeful. So uh, are, are the two of you going to be, uh, you are on the green team at the high school, so you'll continue this work there? Oh, we are not, but we contacted them just to help promote Plastic Free July, and we'll, we'll like continue to uh, keep in contact with them. Super, yeah, that's important. We like working with the green team. That's a, a good group. Does anybody have a question? Um, this yes, is uh, sorry, Mar oh, sorry, Margie Suresh here. I just want to say there's just a wealth of uh, information that you have collected is really, really, um, you know, impressive. And I think we have, we want to figure out a way to organize them and make it persistent on our website and other ways. So um, be happy to work with you guys if you want to, you know, somehow figure out how to do that. So excellent job. Thank you so much. Thanks, Suresh. Yeah, thanks, Suresh. I, I just also want to kind of reiterate the fact that there were, as Michael said, a lot of moving parts to this project, a lot of different ways to communicate and get out the information. Um, and, uh, you know, we all learned a lot in the process. And Plastic Free July was a real success. And we're excited about doing it again with some lessons learned next year. And also, as Suresh was alluding to, really trying to figure out how to capture the information, the resources that were developed for this and use it in a, have it in a more permanent way on the website. Okay, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good way to wrap it up there, Margie. Uh, thumbs up all around. Well done, it it's really has been a pleasure working with every one of you, each and every one of you. Uh, like I said earlier, we, we get so much out of it and what I've just heard is that you're getting a lot out of it too. So that's satisfying. So bravo, well done. Any final comments, anybody? I think yeah. <laughs> just a, a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I guess my final comment is don't be a stranger. Like I know you're all probably taking five or six AP classes and that's right. having college apps and just you know, have all this time on your hands with nothing to do, but um, you are always welcome back. The door is open. And if you want to help us during break or whatever, um, we would love to have you. Yep. Stay in touch. Okay, everybody. Thank you once again. I'm going to end the meeting now. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, interns. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome.
Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Gary. Yep, thank you.